And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. And if we're talking tight ends and we're going into round two, maybe round three, give me Ian Thomas, please. Just let's, I mean, let's just do the damn thing. Just based on giving his overall ability. Um, again, I like his arm. I think he can make every throw. The pick at number 12 is in. So we're back. Cover one, the draft podcast. I'm Russell Brown. Alongside me today to talk Washington Redskins, Mark Bullock of the Athletic DC Redskins analyst. Mark, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, hanging in there, getting closer to the weekend, getting closer to the draft. And that's why I've got you on uh, to kind of recap the Washington Redskins and what they do uh, in the draft, how they've done with free agency, kind of your analysis on it. Um, if you guys want to follow Mark, you must do so on Twitter at Mark Bullock. That's B-U-L-L-O-C-K-N-F-L. Again, Mark Bullock NFL um, on Twitter. Again, a great Redskins analyst for the Athletic DC. So check out his work, give him a follow, all that good stuff. So let's start with the Redskins with free agency and what they've done so far up to this point. Um, I mean, they've been one of the more active teams in the league. And obviously, I think a lot of that's got to do with the coaching changes that they've gone through. You know, you know, Scott Turner's there now. They've got Jack Del Rio on the defensive side of the football. And obviously, Ron Rivera's the head coach. So walk me through some of their free agency, some moves that you like that they've done and, and moves that you didn't like that they, they, they've done. Yeah, so uh, the biggest thing going into it was um, obviously they had a couple of their own free agents and, and they, um, they let Eric Flowers, uh, who... They signed last year as a project to play guard, and he actually ended up playing pretty well, which surprised me. Um, but they let him walk, um, but they franchise tagged Brandon Sheriff to make sure they kept him around. Um, and I, I think that was the correct move. Um, and then in free agency, they, they've they added a bunch of sort of role players, competition players um, that have some upside, but also come with their own question marks um, and uh, it, it's a bunch of guys on what are effectively one-year deals to s sort of try to fill out the roster with with their own guys rather than the guys that were the previous regime um, and try to create some competition for the first year and, and, and figure out you know who's worth sticking with and, and who's who's not we're up to the standard that Rivera is looking for um, and they, they they haven't really got any huge signings. They did take a big swing after Amari Cooper and um, Ron Rivera in his press conference just the other day said that um, they they were in on Cooper right until the end and, and they were pretty gutted to miss out on him. But they um, they understood his decision to want to go back to Dallas. So um, that was the one that they really wanted. After that, they, um, they the biggest profile free agent signing would would have been Kendall Fuller, um, who they traded, of course, to the Chiefs in the Alex Smith deal. Um, and he went and won a Super Bowl there and they brought him back. And it's kind of unsure whether they brought him back to play the slot corner role that he was so successful when the Redskins traded him um, or whether, given that he's getting more money now, he, he might play outside. I suspect he'll probably play slot um, and then in base defense he'll he'll move outside and uh, just to keep him on the field but i think he'll be mostly the nickel corner um the other biggest moves that they made they they uh they got rid of monte nicholson who was a very athletic safety but he had lots of issues with uh tackling and injuries and some big off the field questions too mm -hmm. um and they uh they brought in Sean Davis from the Steelers, um, who I think will kind of give them a pretty similar situation on the field. Davis will be doesn't have the off the field issues that Nicholson does, but um, he's an athletic guy with good range, but tackling issues, um, and so it's almost like for like there in terms of on the field. Um, after that, the um, they brought in the experience of Thomas Davis at linebacker, a, a long time Ron Rivera guy, um, mm -hmm. someone that can be a locker room leader and, and set the culture and 
um, the, the standard that Rivera looks for. Um, so I, I think that will be a, a good signing for the locker room as much as it will be on the field. Um, and one of the signings that I personally like the most was running back J.D. McKissick, who um, was a wide receiver in college um, and then went to the Seahawks after being undrafted um, and uh, kind of converted to running back. Um, and, and he was a receiving running back and then played last year with the Lions and they didn't really make the most of him. Um, and I think in Scott Turner's system, they he likes to have running backs that can be versatile and, and can uh, spread out wide or move into the slot um, and, and move around and catch the ball. Um, and you, we saw that last year, obviously Christian McCaffrey is a, is a bit of a freak, but yeah, um, that that is the kind of role that I can see McKissick playing. And, and I think he's someone that um, is somewhat of an ascending player and that he's finally going to get into a scheme that could use him. So I, th I think those are the main headlines of free agency. Um, and they've signed a bunch of other guys that to fill in other positions, but no real headline act. Yeah. And it certainly seemed like a lot of one year deals just more so, I think Rivera and, and and his guys buying a little bit of time to obviously implement their system, get some players in. Obviously, like you mentioned earlier, some role players. And I, I like the McKissick signing. I'm glad you brought that up because certainly Scott Turner loves those versatile players that he can move all over. I mean, we're probably going to see more tight end sets with this this uh, offense. I, I would assume, just judging by what he's done in, in years past. And um, is is there a is there a tight end on the, on the free agent market that you thought maybe they would go after or a tight end that you feel like they might bring in uh, to fit what Turner has, has been able to do in his time? Uh, I think they, they obviously they hosted Greg Olson when, when he became a free agent, um, but he decided to go to the Seahawks, understandably. Um, and they had some interest in Austin Hooper, but um, the belief is that, when Hooper and his agent were putting out that they wanted to reset the tight end market and get the biggest contract for a tight end, the Redskins were never going to go that high for him. Um, because while they think he's a good tight end, they don't think he's an elite one. They don't think he's someone that can separate versus man coverage particularly easily. So, um, and, and if you're paying a guy the, the top of the market money, you, you kind of want a more complete player. Um, I think had Hunter Henry become free rather than getting tagged, I think that's someone that they would have had pretty significant interest in. Um, but overall, I don't think the tight end market was particularly favorable to them right now. Um, they did bring in Logan Thomas, who obviously was the quarterback at Virginia Tech and tried playing quarterback in the league a little bit and has converted to tight end. And supposedly the tight end coach is pretty excited about him. Um, uh, they've also signed Richard Rogers, who um, hasn't really played in two years due to injuries. So um, it's it's a lot of question marks there, um, and it's a position that they desperately need to fill because they they lost Vernon Davis to re retirement. They Jordan Reed um, they released from his big contract and his constant injury issues. So um, that they have a pretty big hole at tight end, um, and. It's something I expect they, they look at in the draft. Well, yeah, and fortunately for them, there's there's not a – I mean, there, I don't think there's a, a real number one tight end. It's more so pick your flavor in this draft because there's – again, there's not really an elite one in, in this draft. I mean, Cole Komet out of Notre Dame has been talked as maybe the best tight end. Adam Troutman for Dayton uh, maybe is the best tight end. And, you know, those guys might be gone at, at 66 – especially probably 108 but you know them not having a second round pick kind of hurts it if they were in the market for that tight end if they were considering doing it early enough but certainly they'll have some options and probably some guys that can bring that versatility that Turner likes um, I will say this regarding free agency and then we'll move on to just strictly draft stuff I do like the signing of Peyton Barber uh, quite a bit just simply because I feel like he's a guy that if you know he was able to get I think more touches 
he, he was able to show what he could do. And he did that in 2018 when he had over 230 touches, he had almost 900 yards. So he can provide, I think a little bit as far as a pass catcher, he's got over 50 career receptions and um, you know, he's still relatively young, not, not extremely young, but at 26, I mean, you might be able to get some usage there. So I think with McKissick and Barber, they fit what Turner's looking for, for sure. Uh, but as far as tight end, I mean, you had recently wrote a article, which you guys of course can check out on the athletic DC and that's uh, about Hunter Bryant the Washington tight end who uh, I actually also wrote about a few months back and he is a a very versatile player likes to do a lot of crosses across the middle and I really thought he was um I mean, he tested well, but I, I really thought he was going to be the guy that like blew up the combine and he didn't. Yeah. So, so maybe I set the, like the standard a little bit too high, but walk us through a little bit about Hunter Bryant and why he would be such a great fit for uh, the Washington Redskins. Yeah. I, I was kind of surprised when I looked up his, his testing numbers after watching him. I, I was, I, I thought he would have tested better. Um, uh, but I'm not too concerned about that because when, when you watch him, um, on film, you, you see a guy that um, has the athleticism um, and, and really can challenge, uh, well, overmatch linebackers for his athletic ability, um, and he can really challenge a lot of safeties. Um, and as you say, he, he, he ran a lot of crossers and deep overs and, and that kind of thing and got open across the middle and just separated because of his athleticism. Um, I, I think he's somewhat raw in terms of his technique. Um, he, he's He's not someone that um, has the kind of Jordan Reed crossover move to start a step a guy and, and, and break inside and burst away from someone. Um, he, he does need a bit of scheme help, but I, I think the, um, the system at Washington suited him perfectly because um, they, they moved him around and, and they, they lined him up in the slot. They, they lined him up at tight end. They lined him up in, in the backfield um, as a H-back and, um, they moved him all over to manipulate matchups, um, and, and when they got him on a on a tight on a linebacker on a safety, then they could use that speed and that athletic ability to just burst by guys and run by them and and hit them over the top. Um, so uh, he's someone that I think would fit what Scott Turner does, as you say. Um, Turner likes to move guys around, and and he'll he'll go empty quite often, and and try to manipulate matchups from the from the defense and. Um, kind of in a Patriots-esque style from a few years ago when they, they had the two tight ends and, and they'd move those guys around and, and get the matchups with Gronk or with Edelman. And, and um, I think that's what Turner likes to do. Um, and so having a tight end that has the ability to split out wide and line up at receiver uh, or move into the slot or um, or even line up in the backfield um, is, is something that would appeal to him. Um, and uh, I, I think the scheme that, that Turner has in place would allow Bryant to be successful early on in his career while he still develops the, the techniques that he needs to, to become a, a long-term success in the league. Completely agree. And I, I think it's a great fit. I mean, he is certainly, it, it kind of feels like he could be like a, a mini Jordan Reed in a sense, just with some of the athletic ability that he does have. And again, I know like the combine numbers weren't spectacular, but it was still a a good day at the office for him there. And I, I think in that third, fourth round is certainly a, a pretty good value for him. But as you talk of, of a guy that would be a fit as far as lining up in the backfield and, and kind of having some of that versatility, Josiah DeGora from Cincinnati certainly fits that mold um, for, for Bengals fans out there. I mean, he had a, a pretty decent day at the combine as well, ran a four, seven, two, uh, had a 36 inch vertical and had 25 reps in the bench. But if you watch him play, he moves around quite a bit for Cincinnati, whether it's as an H back, as a fullback, um, you know, obviously as an inline blocker, he does a pretty decent job at 6'2, 242. And he actually moves pretty well in space um, when he's got man coverage for a guy that's 6'2, 242. So I'm impressed by him. I think that's certainly a name to circle back to um, for Redskins fans. But, you know, aside from the tight end position, you know, the, the Redskins have pick 60. 106, 108, 142, and, and really all together they have uh, seven picks in this draft. And we, we will talk about the number two pick uh, here briefly in a, in a few moments. But for, for the second and third day of the draft, I mean, what are some, some key positions that you think that they will focus on for this draft outside of tight end? Um, I think tight end is obviously the big one. Um, and then the, the next one would be left tackle um, after – 
there's the whole Trent Williams situation with is he going to get traded, is he not? And it seems like they, the feeling is, is that he will get traded at some point, um, probably during the draft. And, and the Redskins are hoping to get a second round pick or the equivalent of that. And that could be two third round picks or a, a third mm-hmm. round pick and a player. Um, but they're hoping to get the equivalent of second round value for him. Um, so that would then leave a big hole at left tackle. And whether they then wait to fill it after the draft with um, a guy like they had Donald Penn last year who did a, a pretty solid job on almost no notice. Um, or they can go after Jason Peters, who they've, they've contract, contacted earlier in free agency. Um, so someone like that, that, there are some left tackles out there, but I, they're obviously not long-term options. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they could get someone in that third or fourth round range that they could develop, um, I, I'm pretty sure they, they'd like to pull the trigger on that. Um, outside of that, you're looking at corner depth. They, they desperately need some corners, um, safety depth, uh, and that they're not really certain on the linebackers right now. I think they, they like a lot of their linebacking talent, but they're not exactly sure who fits in what role um, and, and who's going to be a, a long-term guy there. I, d- I don't know if they necessarily have their long-term Mike linebacker on the roster. Um, so I, I think those are some of the key spots they'll be looking to add. Um, and, and on offense, uh, wide receiver, if they could get someone opposite Terry McLaurin just to take some of the pressure off him, I, I think they'd like that too. They, they like a lot of their young receivers that they do have, but um, I, I, I'm not sure they're convinced that they have a true number two receiver behind McLaurin. So um, yeah. I think in, in a deep wide receiver draft, they'd like to add another one. Yeah, I was going to ask you about uh, the wide receiver position next, just simply because I, I feel the same way. I mean, I, I had a high grade on Kelvin Harmon last year. I had him in my top 30, top 35. Um, and I, I felt like he was a solid number two receiver, number three receiver at the next level. And he could still develop into that, but it was weird to see him just free fall through the draft last year. But I mean, Steven Sims was a player I watched a little bit at Kansas. I love the the versatility that he brings in the shiftiness and what he's able to do after the catch. I mean, the guy's a, a burner for sure. So, um, I mean, I know they signed Cody Latimer. I, I know they have Trey Quinn, but you're right. They need a number two receiver. Is there a number – I don't want to say a number two receiver, but is there a receiver in this draft with the being so deep uh, that you have maybe studied a little bit or that you have your, your eyes on for them that would be a really good fit somewhere in this draft? Uh, I, I haven't gone deep on the receiver position yet. Um, that is my plan after finishing up the tight ends. Um, but okay. I, I've heard a lot of guys um, – like Michael Pittman um, in the sort of third round range. Um, Van Jefferson's another one that I've, I've heard um, that a lot of people have kind of linked in that kind of range. Um, yeah. uh, the Edwards kid as well. Um, I, I've heard everyone likes him. So um, those are three names that I'm, I'm planning to look at um, and, and could provide that kind of number two receiver opposite Terry McLaurin. And, and I think the huge benefit of, of what they've got um, with McLaurin is that they hit on a guy that can be a true number one receiver there, at least in my position, in my opinion. So I I think that that takes the pressure off of them having to find a guy that can step in and be great right away um, because they, they, they don't have to give him 80, 90 targets. Um, McLaurin can take care of some of that. And obviously the backs and the tight ends, as we talked about in this system, will, will get a lot of targets too. Um, and, and you mentioned Steven Sims. Um, I think he's absolutely electric. Um, and yeah. he's someone that uh, is going to be heavily featured in this offense, I'd imagine. So um, I, I don't think that the number two receiver spot is something that they absolutely have to get. But if there's a guy in a deep receiver class that they really like, um, I, uh, I certainly could see them pulling the trigger on that. And, and the pressure wouldn't be on them to come in and step in right away so I don't know whether there's necessarily a guy that needs a little bit of time to develop and is a little bit raw but has all the traits um, that might fit that kind of spot um, so that is kind of how I'm viewing the receiver position at this spot yeah no and I can't disagree with with anything there and I, I like that you brought up Ryan Edwards out of South Carolina I certainly don't think that this guy's getting enough buzz um, from just you know the consensus but I know some people are certainly relatively high on him and, and in their 
draft boards and stuff like that. Like John Ledyard uh, for Pewter Report, I know he's got him as his fifth or sixth ranked wide receiver. So it'll be interesting to see where he ultimately ends up in this draft because you could see him go as high as the second round, but you could also see him available in that fourth or fifth round simply because of injuries, knee injury uh, to end the year. Then he suffered the broken foot in February while training for the combine. So I, I think he'd be an ideal number two when you have Steven Sims in the slot and, and just some of the things that he can do. And also Edwards, I think, could play a little bit of that big slot receiver role as well if they needed that. Um, so yeah, there's certainly going to be some players that they target for sure on, on the second and third day of the draft on the offensive side. But more than likely, this first pick is going to be a defensive player, this number two pick. And this is what we'll end the show with is, you know, do you think, you don't think this number two pick is going to be a quarterback, do you? No, um, I, I think they kind of, shot that down the moment they traded for Carl Allen, um, which was another move we, we hadn't mentioned previously, but in free agency, they, they traded for Carl Allen, who was the uh, backup that they developed in Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, Scott Turner's worked with him for a while um, and ended up stepping in for Cam Newton for the past few years when he's been injured um, and flashed, flashed some ability and had some bad games too. Um, and I, I think that's the kind of move that says – hey, we're bringing in a guy that knows the system and, and he will um, push Haskins a little bit, but it's not a guy that Haskins shouldn't be able to beat out. Um, and if Haskins right. can't beat him out, then we'll look at a quarterback next year. So um, I, I, I think that they, they've liked what has, the work that Haskins has put in so far this offseason. Um, and I, I think he's going to be given a shot to be the guy this year. Um, and if that fails, then next year they'd look at a quarterback, but not this year. I like the answer. I, I think it'll make mock drafts a hell of a lot easier for sure. <laughs> um, and I mean, I, I agree though. I think it should be a defensive player. I guess now the question is what defensive player will it be? I mean, obviously you have Chase Young at the top of the draft. I agree. I think that should be the guy that, that is the player that they select. I mean, just off the track record of Jack Del Rio as a defensive coordinator, he's had Von Miller uh, when he was in Denver. He had uh, Khalil Mack when he was with the Raiders. In 2002, when he was with the Panthers, he had Julius Peppers. So, um, I mean, he has shown an elite ability or an ability to have an elite edge rusher in his defense. And I think that's something that he can do here with Chase Young. But, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that a guy like Isaiah Simmons is, is certainly on their radar, or Jeff Okuda. So, I mean, really out of those three players, I'm assuming you're going to say Chase Young. But, I mean, what do you think of the other two? And, and do you really think it's going to be Chase Young in a few weeks? Yeah, I, I I do like all three players, um, and but I, I I think ultimately if they stick it to and I expect them to, um, then Chase Young will be the guy. Um, the the possibility would be if someone like Miami or the Chargers get get desperate for Tua um, and have to trade up, and for some reason they go to two instead of three. Mm -hmm. um, at, at that point if they get a deal that blows them away then maybe they drop back and, and they hope that they get Simmons or Okuda and uh, I personally like the potential of Simmons more because I, I think that's kind of a rarer set of skills um, the, the, the coverage ability that he has I, I, I think Okuda is a better player right now I think Simmons can do a little bit more for a defense um, in terms of being able to match up on tight ends and, and running backs. And the, you just don't see a lot of those athletic linebackers that have that coverage ability that he has. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really like Simmons. And in a trade-back scenario, I'd be very happy with Simmons um, uh, and Okuda. I, Okuda can be an excellent corner. Um, but both of them have one or two question marks about them. Like any prospect does, they have questions on them. Whereas I, I, when I watch Chase Young, there really aren't that many questions about him. Um, he's technically very sound. He's got a strong pass rush plan. Um, he's obviously a fantastic athlete um, and has that great first step burst that you, you really look for from the elite guys off the edge. So, um, And as you said, Jack Del Rio um, and even Ron Rivera both have a history of, of developing uh, and utilizing the the best edge rushers around so um they they understand what that can do to a defense and, and both both of them while del rio's more 
traditionally been involved with man coverage schemes and Rivera has been more of a zone coverage guy. Um, they both like to um, philosophically keep things simple, use mainly four man rushes um, and, and have the other guys playing their co basic coverage systems to a high level and being able to read and react quickly. Um, and having a guy like Chase Young on the edge just allows the rest of the defense to play quicker and uh, because the pressure he provides and because the attention that he draws from the offense in, in terms of protection schemes uh, and how that opens everything up for the rest of the, you know, the first round talent that they've drafted on a defensive line. So I think it will be Chase Young. I, I think, I think the most likely thing is that they'll stay at two uh, unless they get a ridiculous offer to trade back. And if they stay at two, um, uh, then I'd be shocked if it isn't Chase Young. Completely agree. I, I think that's what it's going to be as well. And I, I mean, I don't know what the deal would be. I, I think it would probably be the Kings ransom from a team like the Dolphins or the Chargers. But I mean, you, I guess you never really know like what, what the Raiders are thinking either, I guess, for the quarterback position or what any yeah. team's thinking. But anything can happen for sure here in a couple of weeks. We'll see what happens. Uh, if they take Chase Young, I'll end on this question, I promise. If they take <laughs> Chase Young and with their defense of how it's probably going to be shaped up, I mean, what are you projecting that – that front four to look like I mean I know there's really no base defense anymore of a three four or a four three because so many teams like to do nickel and multiple fronts but um, I mean what do you project their defensive line to really look like probably the majority of the time yeah um, well they've already uh, announced that they're switching back to the four three after being a three four team for <laughs> the past decade um, and they I mean everyone's a four man front in in nickel packages anyway but um i would think it'll be montez sweat and chase young on on the edge um with ryan kerrigan substituting in um and then you'll have deron Payne at nose tackle um and jonathan allen and matt ionitis rotating at three technique um and if in certain situations they they want to go with a, a big end a five technique end on one side um then um they could just put one of Allen or Ionitis as a big end um, because they they played a 3-4 defensive end um, mm -hmm. most of their career anyway. So um, I, I think you'll you'll look at um, Young, Sweat, and Kerrigan as the rotation on the outside with probably Sweat and Young as, as the starters. Um, and then uh, Payne, I think, will benefit from the system and he'll be the top nose tackle with, with Tim Settle rotating in occasionally, and then it'll be all about Allen and Ionidas's three technique rotation. I, I mean, that's a six man rotation of just depth, talent, just all around great skill for sure. Um, so thank you for breaking that or breaking that down and, and clearing that up for, for anybody that might have any questions on that, because I have seen that floated around the timeline. Um, but, you know, Mark, where can we find you on Twitter? I know I mentioned at the beginning of the show, but where can we find you on Twitter? Um, and and what, are, what do you got coming out for the next couple of weeks over on the Athletic DC? Yeah, uh, on Twitter, I'm at Mark Bullock NFL. Um, and uh, I'm looking at draft prospects now after free agency wraps up. I'm really getting into draft prospects. So um, uh, I'm hoping to take a look at a couple of tight ends, um, Harrison Bryant and, and Cole Komet, um, and then move on to the wide receivers, as I mentioned, guys like Pittman and Jefferson and, and um, a few other guys possibly. Um, and then hopefully it'll be the draft before sooner or later and we'll have something new to talk about absolutely guys smash that follow button keep up to date with everything that he does on twitter at the athletic dc as well uh for me I, i'm i'm russell brown you can find me on twitter at russ nfl draft until next time this is cover one the draft podcast <laughs>